Right, hello everybody, and uh, mm, mm, nice cup of tea. As usual, welcome to the lab on a particularly cold, wet, and miserable English day. Well, at least on the day of recording. Now, what you uh, have here is what you've seen in one of my previous videos. This is the Olympus AM uh, adding machine from 19, around 1960. An amazing machine we picked up for two pounds. I absolutely love it. It is almost in spotless condition. And this was found a couple of weeks later than the Olympia uh, typewriter of the same style. So it possibly, uh, they possibly came from the same place. Now, how does this, what does this do? Well, it is what it says on the tin. It's an adding machine, usually would have been used probably in accounting departments, and it has very basic functionality. Uh, add and subtraction, and that's it. Now, I will show you it working. First of all, what we're going to do is have a look around the outside uh, before we have a look at the functionality, and then we'll get under our clothes and have a look at how this 1960s technology works exactly. Now, I've already... We haven't got any till well for it, so I've sliced some A4 up and I've already preloaded it. Because it can be a pain. It's not a huge pain, but it takes a few moments to get it in. As you probably saw on my first video about it. Now, on the front of this uh, little beauty, we have the keys here. Lovely, hard, oh, really well built keys there. Oh, oh, oh. And they appear to have just got stuck down. Hang on, let's do a little bit of scientific investigation now. Because those keys have just got stuck down. Which is... Ah! Right, okay, we've just made a discovery. We have to have power. Because those keys stick down. But anyway, we can take the power off because we're still looking around it. Okay, what we have, as I saw, are the keys. These keys are not like modern calculators this is the old style version so you've got plus reset uh, minus that's ah that's called a non add what that does if you type a number on the keyboard and then press the non add it will print it on the paper but it doesn't become part of the calculation so you could put a reference number on the paper something like that this one is the subtotal uh, so done 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus you always put the function afterwards on this uh, then you can press the subtotal uh, this one also subtotals and I press it twice it clears the system this button here this red one simply brings back the display uh, if you add to a number this counts along to show you how many digits you've used if you've got it wrong you can press clear and it goes back and clears the number. Simple, he says. Right, on the top here we've got the plastic panel which goes over the printer. Olympia, all that, very nice. Inside, not much to see, except the huge size of this beast. Where's the camera? There she is. Uh, the 1.6 amp fuse. I wonder if we can get them if, the, if one goes. Imagine so. Uh, back. We've got this, which holds the tow well. I haven't cleaned this yet, this bit. <laughs> yeah. This holds the tow well, power supply, serial number and all that gumph. And the other side, which has just got cooling vents for the power supply. Underneath, serial number, no idea what they're for, and the feet and the school holes. So, <coughs> let's have a look, quick look at this thing working. Just plug it in. So remember this is... This thing is possibly up to 50 years old. Quite impressive. Let's spin this on a bit. Oh, excuse me. Just use this lever to move it on. That one grips or releases the paper. Obviously it's not gripping this right because it's not the right sort of paper. But it will do. Now, to use it, there I've got you know 500 plus 500 plus 500. When you press plus, that comes up on the paper. Type in your second number 500. 
And you can't press the subtotal here at this point because it will just show you 500 for the other subtotal. You've got to press 500 plus and then subtotal. Oh, hang on. Pressing one of those keys cleared it. So let's start that again. So 500 plus 500 plus subtotal. 1500 because I've got three 500s in there now for some reason. Now, if I press that one twice, well, the first one it shows a subtotal. I don't know if you can see this at all. So we get in best we can. Yeah. First one it shows subtotal, second one it clears. So we can start again 20 plus 30 plus 60 plus 80. Remember to put the plus sign in at the end. Then you press the subtotal. Get your total, 190, then you can press that one, which brings up the total. So total again, press it again, clears. And to show you the functionality of this one, if I press the word numbers in there, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a little red line that comes across there to show me how digits you've used. Press that one, it takes that display back electronically. Posh. Right, functionality wise, that's it, I'll show you the printer. Let's take this off, I have to push, lift. Cool. It took us ages to work out when first uh, you switched it on. Okay, turn it around a bit. You can see this amazing printer. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Work of art. Basically, all you've got is some pinheads. Don't ask me exactly how this works, but pinheads. Uh, hmm, let's have a look. Because it's going to have different numbers, isn't it? 1 to 9 on each row. So if I press uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus. Ah, I saw something come up then. A load of heads appeared from somewhere. They must rotate up metallic. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus. Yeah, it looks like they're down there and they rotate so fast you can't see bugger all those heads are somewhere we may get to see <laughs> it's happened so fast you can't see what I may do what I'm going to do I'm going to do this four five six seven eight nine and then hopefully when I edit the video I'm going to do this slowly so you can see exactly what's happening let's zoom in so that when I do it you can see what's happening ready steady go Right, with any luck, slow that down, see what happened. Okay, so, that's the printer. It's wonderful, isn't it? And it just hits against this ribbon here, which runs here. You can get them, still get them now, a couple of quid. Because they still actually produce machines like this, not this exact one, but they still produce machines like this, starting to about £100. Olympia still make them. There is still demand for these. Amazing, in this day and age of the PC, people still want adding machines. So, let's take our paper out. Yes, quite nice, I like that. Let's just have a take this off and have a, let's appreciate this printer more. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? The cogs and stuff in there. Lovely work of technological art. Hmm, nice. Oh, and that's just your, your bar that goes along with you type to show how many characters you've used. Nothing too complex there. Right. Now because this is 60s technology, I'm gonna unplug it. Uh, we thought we'd have a look inside because this is gonna be very different to what you get these days. There's no processor in this as far as we know. Uh, just check these pads because these could be roughed away. Oh they are. Ugh. Typical foam here is just as soon as you touch it, it just collapses and moves away. And you have to stay right on this side, but on this side, it's gone. Yeah, typical of this age. And a lot younger, actually. A lot of 80s stuff does that. But what I'm going to do now is turn it over, open it up. As a uh, certain EEV blog says, don't turn it on, take it apart. Although I find in these videos, he usually does. Turn it on first. Naughty boy. Anyway, let's have a look inside, shall we? 
Right, that's the case of I am not going to touch the foam on this because I suspect it will collapse. Uh, so, we're down to keyboard level. Interesting. Okay, that's the bottom off uh, more foam. It was just sort of suck it onto there. That's an uh, interesting way to do it. Just years of suction with holding it on with these uh, rubber mounts here. Yeah. Nice idea to have the rubber mounts because of the shaking of the me mechanism. Okay. Wow. Let's look at this thing. I thought it would be. Well, I thought we were going to expect it to get transistors, but. No, it is absolutely. As far as I can see. Purely mechanical. What? A piece of engineering. I'm going to have to get a lamp down here. Stand by. Right, that shed a bit of light on the situation. This thing is just wow. It's amazing. All for two quid. Wow. Okay, so look at this. I'm getting excited about this. This is. It looks better out of its case than it did in. Look at this thing. Wow. It is purely electromechanical. There is absolutely, as far as I can see, there are no transistors or anything in this. Look underneath. Ah. It's got cables. These things, springs, going to the keys. How the hell does this work? It's a mystery. Let's plug it in. I'm trying not to electrocute myself. And uh, hmm, let's see if we can get it working. Yes, yeah, so let's see if we can get it working out of its case. Now, I'm not sure. This is going to be too live, so I'm going to check that as I plug it in. All right, plug it in. Uh, <coughs> switch that off, actually. Uh, get that off. Plug that in. All right, let's just see. Yeah, it is going. So. So just make sure that there's no voltages going through the uh, case on this. We'll check it on the... That looks good. No, no DC voltage. Waiting to shock me. And... Hmm, hang on. Right. Not being too so, not being too five in the air. Touch down here. No, it's not live. Good. Right, always a good idea when you're playing with an old metal chassis like this, just in case uh, there's some electrical problems. Just check with your multimeter. Make sure there's no voltages going through it because, uh, first of all, it's going to hurt. Right, okay, so this thing, no wonder it weighs a ton, it's just pure metal. Let's have a look how this works if we can. So, if we press a key, press that key, that goes down. Past what happens there, I have no clue. Although, ah, let's have a look. What I found, if you can see, get it to light for you, behind there is a little panel. For each digit, it seems to have 
a complete row of numbers hidden away there. So if I press 9, hmm, 8, oh yeah I can't see exactly how it's working but it's doing something down there, it's setting uh, numbers on these. Won't worry too much about that, but uh, right, two. So if I press two, there's a, uh, right, you can see down here. You might be able to see. I don't know. Let's bring the light down. Right. Okay. If you can just see. Don't know. Let's have a look. Right. If I press a, a one. Where is it? Oh, the fun. Right. Oh, that's my tea gone over. Sugar. No oh, well. Right. Press one. There was a tiny, 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 tiny pin back there. Which you probably can't see. But it's gone into the array of squares. And I think what it's doing, it's knocking them in. Hmm, interesting. So it's going to the array of squares at the back there. Oh, I didn't lose too much tea. Disaster averted. <laughs> the valuable bit. Yes, it appears a little <sighs> pins that come out. And I think, yeah, it's a sort of dot matrix. Just, uh, matrix of numbers here. And if I poke here, yeah, what it's doing is pushing these little. You can see. The dumb, these little squares here. As it goes along, it pushes them in to the correct value. Hmm, interesting. Now, after that, yeah, what it does after that is. Anybody's guess, it's all voodoo magic. Uh, it must be. Mm. Yes, I have no idea how that works past that point. Pushing those pins in. Then. Mm. That was. Ah, uh, That rotates up, so if those pins are in. That means it's pushing on that means it's pushing on these pins and I'm trying to work this out. So they go up, they rotate up, they push on these pins, must transfer to the left somehow, and they push up the relevant pins. Well, it's gonna be electrical. It's electromechanical, so I don't know how it does that, but you can see the basics of what's happening here. So, what a wonderful little, well, not so little machine. If anybody has any detailed diagrams of how these things work, because there's lots and lots of cogs back there, it'll be interesting. But uh, there you go. The really interesting thing about this thing is. Uh, if you, even if you take its power off, it knows the last number that was put into it. How? Well, I'm still none the wiser. Because there is no physical memory in here whatsoever. There's an induction, there's a motor, capacitors. Maybe it's in the capacitor, I don't know. But it's got no memory, so how can it? I don't know. It's full. Ah, oh, see all the heads there. All the heads with the different numbers are back there, so this rotates somehow and the voodoo magic occurs and it prints. So yes, built to last many eons, which it already has lasted 50 odd years. So it's proved it's metal, literally. <laughs> so yes, uh, interesting machine. 21 minutes of it. Well, be a bit shorter by the time I sped it up, but there we go. So, that is... The Olympus AM adding machine. 
What a beautiful gadget. Two pound, can't believe it. Work of art. Thank you very much. <laughs>